Hello everyone. As you know, I'm a big fan of mini PCs, and I think that we're spoiled right now when it comes to good options compared to other years. One area where mini PCs tend to fall short is in their upgradability. Thankfully, that is not the case with this one. On the B550, you are able to upgrade the CPU, RAM, storage, and the graphics performance through the addition of an eGPU. In this video, we are going to build this eGPU solution and review the performance of this product. So here we are. The B550 comes inside this protective case and it has a strap on the side so you can carry it. It might be a little heavy to carry around with you, but it's nice to have, especially for shipping. I'm going to open this up now to take a look inside. You can see that we have a zipper pouch on one end and a soft divider in the middle. Underneath this divider, you'll find the manual and the PC itself. This pouch is just big enough to hold a power adapter and our cable. I'm going to put that aside for a moment so I can get the PC out. I have to say this case is above average. It's one of my favorite aspects of this product because I tend to carry mini PCs in my backpack and it's nice to have the added protection of this case. Now I want to look at the PC itself. This top shell is plastic and we have the company logo here in the corner along with what I assume are blue LEDs due to the renders. We have a huge air vent on the top along with more on the sides. The back of the device has a strange arrangement of USB ports compared to the company's other products. From left to right, we have a power button, a Kensington lock, display port and HDMI, two USB ports, a second HDMI port, a type C 3.1 gen two port, a set of audio ports, a 2.5 G LAN port and our remaining two USB ports. There's also a decent amount of air vents around these ports. There's a bigger air grate on the left side of the PC with a reset button in the back. The front of the PC is branded with the AMD logo, which is cool to see. Typically, you got to spend more money to get something like this, so it's cool to see that the company has some kind of partnership with AMD for this to happen. The right side is a bit more important, with a smaller grate on the top and our interface panel for the external GPU dock. Finally, the bottom of the device has even more air vents, along with the power connector ports that we will use in just a moment. The bottom of the box that this PC comes in is filled with a bunch of extra stuff to get the dock portion of this mini PC to work. The first thing that I want to look at is the base of the dock. This has PCI lanes on the top with the power delivery connections on the bottom. This base also has airflow vents for the PC while it is docked. We have to do some slight assembly for the rest of the dock, but everything is fairly straightforward with the directions that were included in the box. If you have a modular PSU, the B550 also comes with a set of white power connectors that look nice with the overall design. If you're thinking about making any kind of upgrades to this device, this is a really easy mini PC to service. There are just four standard screws in this back panel and with those removed, you can get access to additional storage options inside. I am going to tear this down a bit more so we can see the cooling system that they're using here because this entire design looks a little different from the ones that the company typically uses in their other devices. For those that are wondering, this is the Wi-Fi module that came with my PC. This is the same part that they've used in some of their other products. I do want to mention that the main PC board is easier to get out of this case than it is on other devices. The case itself just has a circular area here for the fan and this metal part is screwed into the top plastic shell. I really want to get a look at the active cooling that we have on here before moving on. We've got a pretty substantial heatsink, but it's not as big as some of the other ones that I've seen this company use. Our fan is a bit on the smaller side and usually what they'll do is they'll have a heatsink that goes around the fan and it'll spread out the heat on all sides. So I'm interested to see if this will hold up. One of the cool things about this design is that the memory modules are standing up straight with the ability to get cooling from the fan. These are usually lying flat in the other products from this company. The modules themselves are easy to swap out given that they are essentially the same as they would be in a full size PC, but you need to take this out completely if you want to do an upgrade. That would mean you'd have to remove those four screws and the Wi-Fi module cables to get to the RAM slots. The PC that I have came with 16 gigabytes of RAM. So these are two eight gigabyte sticks from Kingston and these are the typical modules that this company uses. Down the line, I am going to upgrade this to 32 gigabytes of RAM, but because I'm planning on using an external GPU in this build, 16 gigabytes of RAM will go a lot further than it would if I were to use the internal GPU to share the memory. I usually get asked to show off the BIOS on these computers, so I wanted to do that now. Minis Forum typically ships a fairly open BIOS, and this product is no exception. You have access to a lot of settings on this board, including some overclock options. 
Now before we connect the GPU, I want to make sure that there are no issues with the board when it's powered by the included adapter. The GPU performance is within the range of this Vega GPU, and the CPU scores are within the range of the 5700G. This product is available as a bare bones kit, but I have the SKU that includes a CPU. I did about a day's worth of testing with this PC without an external GPU to see how well the fan holds up. One thing that I notice is that the fan is very quiet and will typically run at or under 600 RPM, and I'm only able to hear that if I put my ear to the PC itself. Under a CPU stress test, you'll find the fan ramps up to around 1500 RPM, and the heat can get a little over 70 Celsius. Now that our testing is done, it's time to start working on attaching the PC to the dock. I'm going to open up the side panel so we can get to the internal connection that will slide into the dock. Now that it's on the dock, I think this looks really nice on this base. Even if you're not planning to use this for the additional functionality, I think it's nice to have a set like this. I'll also point out that everything here is pretty easy to put together with the labeled screws and the manual. Off camera, I finished assembling the rest of the case that holds the GPU in place. I also wanted to check and see if we can use the barrel jack while the PC is connected, and I want to get a look at the blue LED strip on the front. The lights are not as diffuse as they look in the renders, but they are still nice. So finally, here's the dock with the GPU mounted. The thing that I like about this case is that unlike other mini PCs that we review on this channel, you have more upgrade options to get the most out of your investment. You have Zen 3 CPU cores with a Vega GPU that can get you by in a pinch, but you can make the product a lot better with an external GPU down the line. Now the modular PSU that I was planning on using with this device didn't come in the mail yet, so we are going to have to use another one to do the test with this system. But I still want to show you what it would look like to use the white connectors that came with this package. Our first cable is a 4 pin cable, and that's going to go right here on the bottom of the mini PC. The other end of this cable would connect to your PSU. Our next cable is a 24 pin, and this is going to attach to the base of the dock. This one required a bit more force to connect it, but it shouldn't be like this when you buy the retail device. We also have a 10 pin connector that attaches to the bottom of the mini PC on one end, and the base of the dock on the other. Now at this point, you can connect your GPU to the dock. When it comes to cable management, there's not going to be a whole lot that you're going to be able to do. Depending on where you plan on putting your PSU, you might be able to block some of these cables from view. With all that said, I don't think that it looks that bad. This is my first boot with the external GPU connected to the dock, and I did not have any issues. We are using a GTX 1060 6GB because it's the only card that I had lying around. We won't get the full benefit of this system with a 1060, but it will be much better than the iGPU, especially for 1080p gameplay and emulation. Windows Update had a display driver waiting for me, but I am going to get the full GeForce drivers from NVIDIA. I also wanted to do a benchmark of the SSD that came with this device. You can buy this kit bare bones without a hard drive if you want, but the one that they included is fairly decent. Now let's take a look at the gaming performance of the B550 with the 5700G and an external GPU. This is the first time that I'm testing out a mini PC with an external GPU, so I'm interested to see how this will perform. Here we have Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p, with the graphics setting set to medium. I'm recording this footage on the PC itself while running the game, so we might have some slight performance loss, but it should not be that bad. Moving on, here we have Sekiro at 1080p, high settings. This next one is one of my favorite games to play when I have some time to kill. Here's Gunfire Reborn at 1080p using the very high preset option. This is a bit of an older title, but here we have Fallout 4 at 1080p using the ultra preset. Next up, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Great scholar. What? You're a weird one, aren't you? The GTX 1060 doesn't have nearly enough power to max out this game, but here we have Monster Hunter World at 1080p using the high image quality option. <laughs> Our final PC game for this showcase is Control at 1080p using the medium preset. Before finishing this video, I want to look at the emulation performance of this mini PC. Here we have 3DS with the Citra emulator and the rendering resolution is set to 4x native. 
Now let's take a look at Wii U performance using the CMU emulator. This game already runs well without an external GPU, so there are no surprises here. Let's move on to something that's a bit more demanding. Here is Xbox 360 emulation with the Xenia emulator. The first title would probably be a better candidate for Yuzu, but it still runs well with this emulator. For PS3, I want to try out some heavy hitters. We are using the RPCS3 emulator for this, and the games are running at their native resolution. More pills, lots of ammo. Hey, Cole, before we head over to Archer, I need to go pick up a new six shooter. Oh, here we go. Our final system is Switch with the Yuzu emulator. The two games that I included here run well without any GPU, but it was nice to see some improvements in performance, especially with Link's Awakening. Anyway, that's it for this review of the B550. If you're looking into mini PCs with a low starting price and room for upgrades down the line, this is one of the better products on the market today. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you here next time with another one. Now go out and enjoy the rest of your day. Talk to you out.